Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching the channel as always. This project is going to be another riding mower project. We're going to make basically two into one. I have one that has a bad transmission but runs and uh, the blazing gauge and all that good stuff. And this one right here has been sitting for a while, but I know it has a good transmission in it uh, just by shifting gears and a visual inspection. So we're going to swap these things out. These are MTD riders, old MTD riders. This one's around 2000. This is probably an early 90s model. They do share the same transmission, though. Uh, everything that I can tell. There may be a couple of springs that are different, but everything else should be fine. So, that's what this video is going to be about. I hope you all enjoy it. I'll give you a look around of both mowers and then we'll get started. So if you have any questions about this video, feel free to reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll go ahead and get started with this repair. Let's go. So again, these both are MTD riders. This one has uh, become a shark but it's like an old Lowe's or something like that. This one's a yard machine, same underpinnings, just different uh, sheet metal, essentially. Uh, so, this one's a 16 and a half horsepower Briggs & Stratton yard machines. It does have a small oil, oil leak, but we'll get that taken care of once we get it driving. I pulled it up onto my trailer. It does have a bad transmission, though. It's a 42 inch deck. The guy just put a brand new deck belt on it. So, that's nice, and I got this for $100 in addition to a, a Lawn Boy self-propelled push mower that had a Kohler engine on it that needed a carb clean. I have that listed for $120, so essentially I don't really have any money in this riding mower. Back tires are in good shape. So, I mean, you've got a lot of good stuff going on here, but the issue arises back here where you can see that the casing of the transmission has split right here on the right side at the top. And you got a bunch of residue and the axle's not straight and slipping gears. So this transmission is toast, unfortunately. It's the seven speed shift on the go. I think they're all one, two, three, four. Both of these are seven speed shift on the goes. Uh, Vera drives, uh, got the shifter in the middle. So we've got, that's good. And yeah, so that's that one. This one right here I got for free couple years ago now with another Murray riding mower and I was you know it's one of those projects where like ah, it's not worth a lot of money but when I have spare time don't have a lot of projects around here I'll see if I get it going never happened probably never would have happened anyways uh, this is like I said been painted and turned into a shark or something like that but this has a good transmission in the back as you can see and don't have any busted casings or anything like that. A little bit of leaking, but nothing ridiculous. Some, something that we can easily work with here. And uh, the only thing I can see is that the spring location is on a different side for the deck. So this one's on the right side, the other one's on the left side. And I honestly don't think it matters, truthfully. Just as long as it's on one side, it should be fine. Uh, engine wise, this might live on as a parts mower and a couple of other mowers as well, but it's got an 11 horsepower Briggs in it. Um, basically we need everything because this thing's even frozen right here. So we'd have to free that up and all that good stuff. Not worth the time and the effort to try and fix, unfortunately. Even if I fixed it, it'd only be like a $200 mower. So deck's okay. A few other things along those lines. Tire, a couple of tires are okay too. Those tires hold air, so we've got some decent front tires there as well. Anyways, that's the walk around. What we're going to start out doing first is I think we're going to go ahead and take the parts transmission off here. That way I can get that out of the garage over somewhere out of the way. And then whatever I don't do right on this, I'll do right on that. It's been probably 10 years since I've swapped an MTD Veradrive transmission, so this is going to be a little bit different. Shouldn't be that hard, though. Getting started on this, it may not be quite as hard as I think it's going to be. 
What I have done so far is just taken this panel off up top, which is two quarter inch bolts. You may have to unplug a safety switch, the neutral safety switch. I have since lowered the deck all the way down, which takes most of the tension off of this deck spring here. And then I just took a screwdriver and got it off of its little insert right there. We're probably gonna put the other one on that has the better spring. Another thing I see that I've got to do down here is take off this, uh, it looks like a brake return spring. It's just literally just clipped on the bottom of the transmission here. So we'll get that off as well. Ugh. And it just clips on and goes up like that. And we'll, uh, we'll see what we need to do after that. There is a shifter. I got to figure out the shifter situation, but we are pretty close to just being able to just take these four bolts off right here and get this thing off. I might see if I can get the tires off first as well, which might be a chore, but if I can get these tires off, then we'll be in good shape to um, just put the other ones on. So we will work on that. See if I can get these tires off. Maybe give me a little bit better access to what the shifter looks like if I can jack this thing up and then we'll get this thing out. All right, guys, I had to end up doing a change of plans here. Uh, the right rear on this old one, just I cannot get it off. I'm gonna let it soak in some lubricant for a while. You can see these tires are trash. And so I wasn't really, I didn't really care if I was gonna save the wheels or not. The only thing is I'm hoping I don't knock the axle out. I have made a little bit of a headway here. And so I'm just letting some of the stuff sit and if I need to, I'll put a tire on and just try and wiggle it out, which is what I ended up having to do. I went ahead and took the tires off of this and the right one came off pretty easily. You can see where the whole casing is cracked on this one. So uh, I'm not sure what happened. I think an axle bent or something inside it because you can see the big gap. Again, the spring on this as well. We've got to take that off you got four bolts on each side or two bolts on each side that got to come off and then you have a don't know if the vera drive has to come off or this transmission pulley has to come off or lever but i do know that the some sort of linkage for the shifter here underneath i'll have to look at that like i said it's been a long long time since i've done this so I think I'm gonna get this thing up on jack stands really high and see if I can just go ahead and try and take this whole thing off here. Uh, and I honestly see just what I need to do. I knew the tire, the tires are the hardest guys. If, you, if they've been on here a while, by far they are the hardest to get off. This one, I mean, that one probably ain't never seen the wheels come off in its entire life. Uh, or at least in the past 10 years or so. I know it's been tubed, but and this one right here Looks like I still have the original tires on it, but they are holding air great. So I'm happy with that Let me see what I need to do. I'll let y'all know what happens All right, so we're getting there guys. We're getting close um, I took the shifter screws off the side here. So the shifters hanging there is a pin holding the shifter linkage onto the transmission it goes right here on the left side there's a little slot right there seven eighths inch impact with an extension will allow you to get the main pulley off here and i was able to pull that just take it off and pull it out and i will have to replace the belt on this too so i'll have to order a belt for this but so the main pulley is out and one other thing I think I'm gonna do, I'll have to see what I decide to do here. I think what I'm gonna do is t on the right side over here, hopefully we've got good light in here now to show you, but I'm going to take the brake caliper off right there, a couple of three eighths, and that'll just allow me to get that out of the way as well. And we should, in theory be able to pull this transmission next after that which is just four bolts 
So let me get these three eighths off and uh, pull this brake caliper off instead of having to try and finagle with springs and linkages and stuff. And uh, we will put it back, uh, try and get this thing off here. All right, y'all, brake caliper is off, two three eighths, and then I just pulled the caliper off of the brake spring there. Just got it sitting up here. Super easy. I've gotten three of the four bolts off here for the transmission. I've double checked everything. Everything should just come on out now, from what I can tell. So I've got the fourth bolt of the transmission almost ready. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take it out. It might be a little dramatic getting it off, but we'll see here. But it should just be able to pull down. So. It should, in theory, just be able to drop right down now. So, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this. If I can put this thing on the ground. So, hashtag jack problems. Okay. So, let me pull this out. Pull this transmission up. Let me see if it'll come out. It will not. So, what's holding it? course on the inside there I've got one bolt holding it so let me put one of these back for a second Put one of these back. I'll jack it up by the transmission again. And I'll do my best to show you where this bolt is. There we go. Alright, let me do my best to show you where this bolt is. It is on the front of this mechanism right here, of this bracket. Let me see if I can get down there and show y'all. See where we can locate it. That should be the only thing holding it in. So there is a fifth bolt that I didn't see. And it is right. Oh man, where are you? Right there. It's literally like a little 3H or something along those lines. Hands in the way. Right above that. So let me grab something to get that off. Oh. And then we'll commence all the power tools but there's a, a little bitty bolt there that i think was holding everything on so let's try this again kind of crazy ain't it might be a little fun trying to get all this mess lined back up but oh, i don't know there's something else holding on to it what else is holding on to this thing come on What else? Maybe it's one more of them down there. Ah, there is. There is one more. Secret bolts, guys. Let me get this last one off here.
has to be it. Let's see that second one. There ain't nothing holding this thing on anymore. Well, there shouldn't be. What's holding it on over here? Oh, that one bolt I put in. That's what. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm a mess, aren't I? All right. Let me just get this thing out. Uh... Keep this little thing here. Yeah, you just want to drop out. There we go. Yay! Transmission number one is out. Didn't take too long. Slide it out this way or that way, whatever way we want to go. See how bad the damage is while we're here. Yeah, so I think all it did was, I don't know if it cracked the casing at the top, but it does look like the ax, something happened with the axle on the inside because all of this is all walled out here, as you can see. And, uh, not working, obviously, so. I do have that pulley, or that right there, we can keep. Hopefully our shaft is in good shape. I don't have to... Because it was grabbing gears, it just wasn't... Oh, we even got to keep that too. It was grabbing gears, it just was slipping because the axle wasn't lined up. So you lose, you know, traction on one side, you lose them on both. Because it's, um, what do you call it? Not positive traction, but, um, you know choose the wheel path of least resistance type transaxle so that's what was going on with that it's out the second one i'm not going to show i just need to um knock the mess out of that wheel to get it off and hopefully not mess up the axle and then i should be able to do the same um thing to that one that i did to this one and so i'll rejoin you when i get that one off and we put it on this mower I'm going to give you all an overview of what was a battle, or maybe a war. I think I won the war. I don't know yet. Let's we'll see. Hopefully, it doesn't mess any of this transmission up trying to do this. But y'all know the tires on this were completely shot, and uh, I need to get the wheels off. And the left one came off fairly easily. A few hits with the hammer. I didn't really care about the wheel, but the right one. Oh my goodness, probably a good hour and a half or so of work to get this off. Just constant heating and cutting and lubricant and you name it. But it is off. Uh, everything is still turning. I think the brake might be on the... I actually ended up busting the bracket mounting bracket right here on this side because I had to knock it so much uh, it is off like I said you can still see that it turns and everything so I'll show you that real quick but I've got that going on I don't think I think it's a little bound up because of the way that it's on the frame so, but you can still see that everything is turning like it needs to. I hope I didn't pull the axle out or anything like that. It's not slipping or anything like that other transmission. But it was either do this or I won't gonna get it off. So I let it sit overnight to just soaked in lubricant. Got it off though, guys. I'm gonna finish getting this transmission out. Probably not today at this point, but. I'll get this transmission out, and once I get to the point where I'm putting it in the other mower, we'll put it in the other mower, 
and test it out. Hopefully we have a good transmission in this. I think it, I think I do. I, um, I hope so. Uh, I think it's just a little bound up just because of the way I had to mess with, uh, break, basically breaking the frame in order to get this thing off. So it is what it is. It's a junk mower anyway. So all I've lost is a little bit of time if it doesn't work. Catch back up with y'all in a minute. I have sad news, unfortunately. The good news is I got the tire off. I think I showed you all that. But then after I filmed, I looked under here and, oh, yeah. So, I'm kind of kicking myself because I think both of those tires had tubes in them and I could have just filled them up. But I was trying to go for the aesthetic look because that mower is in such a good condition. But I've got this mower here that probably would have never been brought back that has the same transmission and I just got to put tire tubes in this now which I think I've got a couple. I hope I do. I got to check. Uh, and we'll slap this one on instead. The pulley's in better shape anyway, so I don't feel quite as bad about I think the belts are in good are in good condition too, so we'll swap the pulley and the belts and probably just call it a day on this mower. Uh, engine's been apart. So we've got good engine parts, so it's probably going to be one of them pull the engine, pull the transmission, and let it ride type deals. I have a good deck off of this too, so we'll see what we end up having to do to this thing. Uh, I can probably sell the deck that I have for 100 bucks because it's got brand new spindles and stuff on it too. Uh, so that's where that's the situation that we're currently in. I'm going to pull this transmission off, do my best to get tire tubes in these things. I hope they I hope the tubes hold, and um, we'll go from there. So I'll rejoin you when we get this transmission on the other mower. All right, guys. I got the wheel off and it didn't break a transmission. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so the transmission on this Lowe's, the right side tire was way too trash in order to put a tube and stuff in. I had big old cuts. So what I ended up doing, I wanted to take both of them off, but I wanted to quit while I'm ahead because this tire holds air. So I'm going to throw some ATF in that tire. What I did is by Robert advice and a couple other folks advice on Instagram YouTube comments I got a I got my uh, puller my wheel puller but I was having issues finding a thread so what I did I'll kind of show you on this because this is the final setup for this transmission now and this will bolt right on I mean I'll have this thing on in like 45 minutes or 30 45 minutes so what I did is you see on this you have your little insert here for the wheel what I did is I put the jaw puller through the holes that were on that wheel there's not any on this wheel but I put them through the wheel and put a nut on there and then took the bottom of this jaw puller here which had the little pointy end on it after I put those bolts through and ooh, uh, it's here somewhere. I, I my, that's a mess right now. But I took the puller and fixed it up against that. And this right here is smaller than the diameter of the little shaft. And so it just pressed in on that and started pushing the tire up. So I got to the point where I got that first one down there far enough. I put a second one on there, a third one on there, and a fourth one on there. And it ended up finally being able to pull that tire off. Now what I wanted to do, and I know some of y'all are going to be like, why don't you just take the other one off look guys let me show you I mean, this is the y'all know i clean my garage this is the current state of it there's three three riding mowers here here's the cracked case on this one i briefly thought about jb welding it and then i thought better so this is i'm gonna just basically chuck this one i want to put the new tires on or the nice tires on this but I didn't want to um, mess up another transmission. This tire is good. This tire has a tube in it and it holds air just fine. I'll paint the wheels white or some or black just to 
make it look better and we'll be done with this i'm going to get this in it's really easy there's only one difference in this transmission than the other i mentioned that there were two bolts in the front of that transmission this transmission's got one that bolts up through the top or through the bottom it comes out a hole on the top that yard machines in there has that provision for that so that's good i will put i will get this on not tonight but in the morning and i think i got this thing in neutral right now which is why it's not doing anything because it was doing something earlier Woo. so that's that's the deal here guys there we go I thought I put it in gear. Oh, because the brake's missing, that's why. There you go. There's your moving transmission right there. So that's the deal we're going to put this transmission in that mower and once i get it in there we will i'll rejoin you and we'll test this thing out all right guys we're in the process here about to start overnight that's the next day tires are holding air i'll put a little atf in this the tube is doing great on this i know there's a bunch of dry rock cracks and i wanted to put these tires on there but i didn't want to risk messing up that side since i would have to pull that wheel too this is the one that i replaced from uh the first rear end that I screwed up so what I've done is I've already pre put a belt on this old belt right here is a little bit too thin for what it is it's just a regular v-belt the v-belts that go on these mtds are thicker because of this variable speed pulley the front belt is in decent shape this rear belt I robbed off of the Lowe's mower that I took the second transmission off of it's got a little bit of rust glaze on it once we get some use on that, that'll clear itself out. So, looks like we have a fairly new starter solenoid on this too, which is nice. And we have a couple of small things still left to do, like fix this oil dipstick tube. Just throw an O-ring on there and that fixes that issue. And probably do a valve adjustment on the engine. Make sure the air filter and everything's good on it. And that should be all that we've got to do after we get this transmission in. Now... We should be able to just slide it in. I'll see if I can show y'all how to get this done here. Not, I don't think it's gonna be too bad because you know I took three of these out in order to accomplish this. So this is the, let's see, the left side. We will have to uh, get creative since I already have the tires on it. So I think what I've gotta do, is get this thing jacked up i'm going to jack it up put it on jack stands and probably slide it in that way so let me do that we grab the jack stands Because we do have to, with the pulley on it, we kind of have to get it up and in from the rear. So, what we need here let's see if we can slide this thing in now like I said it gets a little tricky with the tires on it but we'll see what we can do here slide it. okay so we've got it under there What's killer is I think I've got it in gear currently, so it's trying to fall back on its face on me. So we've got it under there. 
Now we just gotta get it up around the pulley. So let me go ahead and work on that and I'll show you once I get to that point. I can use the leverage of the jack more now too as well. So if you do a little bit of fudging around and stuff like that, you are able to get, what you have to do is get this front lip of this pulley on above this uh, pivot bracket for the tensioner. Once you do that, you kind of are able to finagle everything into place at that point. So that's what we're gonna do next. We'll lower everything and get rid of the jack stands. Send them out the back, that'd be great. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the mower. We're kind of where we need to be now, so we'll jack the transmission up on the frame here. Get these out of here, lower everything down, and now we'll line up everything. As good as we can. Just trying to get this belt on while I'm at it, because that'll make life easier. Well, okay, so the belt is on. Now, I just need to line up some holes, get some bolts in, and uh, We'll basically have everything ready at that point. Uh, it's not. This is not a bad, a bad job. In all seriousness, I just made it hard on myself, like I always do. Y'all know that. So, four bolts right here. That one bolt on the bot on the uh, inside portion. I'll show you that bolt, and then we'll throw the shifter and all that stuff together. I'll show you the final setup, and then we'll uh, see if we can start this thing up and drive it. All right, y'all, everything is in, buttoned up. A couple of words of caution whenever you're doing this. One is the tensioner spring down under here. Not this deck spring. I used a little bracket to get that back on. You just pull it with some mechanics wire or a shoestring. But that tensioner spring right there is a bear to get on that pivot arm if it comes off after you get the transmission on. So be sure that doesn't fall off. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of fiddling it around. There is, unfortunately, a little bit of seepage on this transmission, but I do know that it works. So, or at least I've never seen it work, but it was on a working mower when the engine went out on it. So... That deck spring is back on, that tensioner spring back on, the brake caliper is back on. There is an inside and an outside brake pad in addition to the brake disc, which is held on by a key. So make, be sure you have all of those parts. And then you have your four bolts. For the back, you have one bolt. We have your shifter linkage. Where that little clip is right there, you just slide that in and clip it. And then you have one more bolt that is right there in the middle of your screen. Right there. That slides up. Some of them, like the original transmission in this, actually went in to the transmission instead of up. So that one went in 90 degrees. This is a, basically the same transmission except for that bolt, though, thankfully. So tires are on holding air. 
I've put the battery back in, I've put the belt on, and we've got, let's see if I can get it in forward and reverse here. Oh, that's a little messed up, so we'll work on, I have to take that back off and get that neutral switch back correct. But I do have gears right there, put it in neutral. That's not neutral, that's neutral. Yeah, I'm kind of going to put it in a bigger gear. It was moving, but of course it's not now, now that I'm going to showcase it. It is kind of hard to shift these things sometimes to get them in the right gear. But I might have to work on the brake just a tiny bit as well. We'll see in just a second. But I will crank it up, we'll drive it around, make sure the deck and everything works, and then I just have to do a couple little small things like an oil change, put the O-ring on the oil pan or on the oil dipstick, and a valve adjustment. So when trying to start this originally, I had a couple of issues. One of them, the engine bolts had backed their way out a little bit, and so the engine was rocking back and forth a little bit. That didn't help. The guy, whoever had it, did do diligence and put another carburetor on it, which is cool. But this right here was not fitting up in there very well, the anti-backfire. So I took the 13 millimeter off and just cut off the anti-backfire solenoid. I had my top done jump starter on there. It was a little weak, but it was turning it over. The battery's a little weak. I'll have to charge it here in a little bit. But let's see if we can get this thing to crank for us. I do know that it runs because I drove it onto the trailer even with a bad transmission. All right, here we go. bunch of oil to burn off from the valve cover and all that junk on the engine that I need to wash off. Let's see if it'll drive out of here. Like 
the belts are doing okay also gears are stopping when they're supposed to brakes are working so that's good i knew it wasn't going to rain i go ahead and wash this thing up charge the battery while i'm at it probably going to do that actually need to wash it and change the oil and all that stuff in it put that o-ring in that dipstick which i'll probably do here now actually so let me go ahead and do that I do need to fix that right there Whee. that belt's going to make a little bit of a noise or a little bit of a smell until i get it fully fixed if everything's working like it should it sounds like so Hopefully we don't backfire. Nope, okay. So, I gotta do, do a few things to button it up, charge the battery, a couple of other things, clean my garage up, throw some things away, and I will rejoin y'all whenever I uh, get it all fixed. I think we're almost done, guys. That's exciting. So, let me do it to it, and I'll catch y'all in just a little bit. All right, guys, let me show you the final product here. Uh, it actually turned out pretty good. Still drying. I still got the battery on the charger, so I won't worry about testing it. Y'all saw it run, drive, cut, and do all of its good stuff. Um, nothing really to, else to worry about on this. This is, a, I guess, a little bit of an upgraded model from the basic one because it's got the shifter on the side instead of in, the, in, the, in between your legs there. 16 and a half. Most of them come with like 14 and a half and stuff like that. So not too bad hoods a little messed up still relatively intact does what it needs to do uh deck i will i think i might paint those wheels black or something along those lines top off some air and some tires here and should be good like i said i've had this one for a couple months atf in the rear tire and uh it ran when i got it and y'all saw it run earlier so that's it for this um transmission seems to be doing just fine shifting doing exactly what it needs to getting that belt worn in after it hasn't run in a while variable speeds working great so that's all i can ask for let's wrap this video up well guys that is everything on this yard machines transmission swap if there is anything about this video that i have learned uh it's number one how to get wheels off that are frozen using a wheel puller instead of trying to just hammer them off. That's how I broke transmission number one. And that was the biggest thing. This should have been about a three hour job. It turned into a three day job, unfortunately. But this is the first one I've done in many, many years. And now I know what I need to do. So the next time it comes about, should be able to fix it fairly easily. So hope you all uh, learn from my mistakes, but at the same time, hopefully something about this helped y'all out as well. So I thank y'all for watching. We have a decent mower now that's going to return about $350 here in the spring. So another one ready. That is my currently my second one that I have ready now for the spring. Uh, got a couple of others that should be um, hopefully relatively quick fixes, a compression release, and that 178 John Deere out there that hopefully just needs the whole fuel system gone through. And swap out some bad tires and stuff like that in order to get it going so that should be coming up on the channel along with a few smaller projects just trying to get stuff ready for the spring along with the clean out video uh, got a lot of exciting things happening here at the end of the month you'll see uh, the whole deal with my garage overhaul from start to finish y'all know what it looked like a few months ago and it looks a lot different now also i've got a second channel coming up here uh, around me playing golf it's going to be called casey plays golf that uh, channel is live currently with no videos you can subscribe to that channel as well if you would like and the videos will be coming early january on that channel i enjoy playing golf as well and i will I'm having a lot of fun editing those videos as well a little bit more involved than these but i do appreciate you guys watching we are almost six years strong here on youtube here on ellis mowers and we've got plenty more to fix out there in the yard and in all my other storage areas. So thank you all again, and I'll catch you all on the next one. See you then.